while I was preaching, there was a literally a, a wrestling, a fight going on within me. And, and it came down to, I need to do this. And while I was preaching towards the end, I said, there's a piece of me that I've, not, I've never shared with you, and I want to share this with you. I am a minister. I have married you. I will bury you. I will be there for you. Uh, but I am gay. And you could have heard a pin drop. It was like eternity forever. I was like, what are they going to do? How are they going to respond? And there was just, you know, after like five seconds, which felt like eternity for me, it felt like 20 minutes, there was just an applause. There was just, we love you. And it was, it was very moving. I was preaching authenticity. I was preaching grace for all and to be open and honest that you're going to be accepted and loved. And then my friends, my straight friends actually confronted me and said, but you're not being open and honest. You know, who knew I was gay? Like my roommate knew I was gay and some close staff friends knew. And I was empowered by my friends to, to live into the light. A lot of people were like, uh, we already knew, you know, I mean, look how you dress and the shoes you have and all those things, but I'm not your typical gay man either. Um, and some people were like, well, we're glad you're honest with us. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> so it was that type of thing. So, but it actually, after that announcement, our church grew. And I don't mean by numbers. I don't mean we're like a mega church. That's not what I, but spiritually we grew and numerically we grew, but I think as a community, we grew. We definitely have a, a gay community. But a lot of the, the gays that come to Mission Gathering, it sounds odd to say that, the gays that come to Mission Gathering um, don't really want to go to a gay church. And that was always my fear of coming out and saying I am gay to the congregation because all of a sudden it could become a gay church. And that's, that's what I don't want. Obviously, we are attracting people who are progressive in their theology. But we are an evangelical church. We are definitely an evangelical church. We believe in the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. That is the foundation of our church. But if you get like a lot of people, if, if you're progressive in your theology, well then you have to walk away from that. And our liberal brothers and sisters, you know, they think we're too conservative. And our conservative brothers and sisters think we're too liberal. We want to be madly in love with Jesus. And my sexuality should not hinder that, you know, for us as a church. For the longest time, I was a closeted gay Christian, but I was in ministry for years. This thing that I love so much, the church, is not only in, you know, encouraging me, they want me to hide that. You know, I mean, because people knew, I mean, I was getting in my late 30s, and they knew something was up, right? You should be married by I should point. be married, I should have kids, and I should be pastoring a mega church, you know, all those things in suburbia. You know, all those wonderful things. And it's like, I wasn't doing any of those things. And yet I was still working within the evangelical church. I was still preaching. And that's one thing, that's one of the decisions I made early on. I didn't want to, you know, deceive a girl and try to make myself straight and marry someone uh, Knowing later, I mean, I mean, knowing later that I would eventually act out who I am, who I am as a person, and so, uh, and so that's something I chose to do. I chose not to do, even do that. I didn't even date, really. And so obvious, it was obvious to these leaders in the church that hired me or whatever, but it was still encouraged to be quiet. So being a closeted gay Christian, I lived with a lot of guilt. A lot of shame and then I did a lot of you know research for myself I mean I was at a place that um, I would just live in a celibate life I would just I would not um, that's where I'm at theologically and that's where I you know but as I kept digging theologically and as, as I as, as you know John Wesley through you know experiences you know and then tradition and what have you to those certain filters I they went through my theological filters The church is great, and, and it's our biggest sin, I believe, in really enabling unhealthiness in straight and gay world. You know what I mean? Like, you know, and not being open about 
our sexual struggles, our temptations, and what have you. And you know, we bounce this word authentic around so much. You know, we wanna be an authentic church. Really, do you really wanna know my shit? Because if you do, you're still gonna love me the same. And, um, and I think the church has gotta to come to a place we all have our stuff, we all are screwed up, and we need Jesus. And hopefully, um, this issue for the gay community, we can be accepted, accepted completely. Um, but it's, we're not there yet.